Everybody knows that I love collecting prototypes and canceled cars and unreleased stuff in general. And the reason for that is because they open up an entire new realm of the cars collecting hobby and for better or for worse, an infinite one because you can go on and on with these prototypes and canceled stuff. They're hard to get, but there's a lot of them out there, especially for prototypes, you know, going back 16 years ago and they're still making them obviously to this day. So it's always a lot of fun for me to kind of divert my attention over to this side of the hobby when the actual new stuff in stores has been a little bit slow or they haven't released a new case in a while. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my recent additions of prototypes, canceled stuff, unreleased, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people actually have requested this video in terms of a more specific focused haul video instead of the all encompassing giga haul videos. So yeah, I'm going to focus a little bit more on each prototype share where they came from, figure out where some of them came from because I really don't know what they are. And yeah, just give each of them the attention that they deserve instead of just, you know, rifling through them one by one and they giggle. So we're going to start with, wait, 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 wait. We have to address the elephant in the room. I knew you guys are thinking about it. Of course, 2023, a new year brings upon a change to the review table we finally have an accurate lineup of the buildings. First time ever, actually, that that has happened on this table. The Cozy Cone, Lizzie's Curio Shop, Luigi's Casa Del Tires, and maybe one day, there'll be something over on the right side of that. We'll see what happens. And of course, I wanna make this feel real. I want to be engrossed in the Radiator Springs. And unfortunately, the terrain in Radiator Springs is not wood, it is desert sand, dirt, gravel stuff and that is what i'm trying to emulate here with the new terrain that i laid out you'll also see some cacti in the background that you might not have seen before so i'm super pumped about this change i hope you guys like it let me know what you think in the comments below but we're going to get right on rolling with these packaged cars 2 prototypes these are the most unknown things on the table that we're going to look at today, just because I have never seen anything like them. So a usual Cars 2 short card, you know, looks pretty similar to this. You'll have the Cars 2 logo on the top left, Disney, Pixar, Porta Corso in the background. Now, the main difference we're going to see right off the bat is that the name tags are just like one piece. They aren't two, actually, well, I had no idea. Usually the name pieces are folded around the bottom of the blister, but it appears that short cards, they didn't do that. They just had one piece in there. So that's actually super interesting, but the Fimic missile is not centered properly or rather left centered. It's not oriented properly like Jeff Corvette is here, but you still have the Mattel logo in the bottom right corner, three plus, more like 18 plus. <laughs> Now you'll see a few like font differences here. Look for these characters it has a bold background instead of the more lighter background that it has. It doesn't have that drop shadow. It's a better way to put it. But everything else is very similar. You know, Mater, Fimic Missile, Lame McQueen, Francesco Bernoulli, Holly Schiffwell, Rod Torque, Redline, Jeff Corvette, Carlos, and Professor Z. Everything looks to be spelled properly. And I say that because some people will, you know, think that these might be knockoffs counterfeits, factory customs, whatnot. And hey, there, you know, there could be credence to that, but I am going to lean on the you know, side of this being a prototype for all the reasons that we're going to discuss here and that we have already discussed. Now this part, again, is very identical to what we're used to. It's oriented a little bit differently. The text seems to be a bit bolder, but everything's there. Now we haven't looked at the vehicle itself yet, which will be kind of the major telling sign, but everything on the back here checks out. So yeah, this is a unibody Fimic missile. And as you can see, this is from 2000, well, copyrighted in 2010 and will have come out in 2011 for the debut of Cars 2. Unibody Fin did not exist back then. He actually looked like this. He was segmented in a variety of ways. One of those being the mouth plate. You can see the crack along the hood right there and the eyepiece is not a part of the main metal body either. But on this version, everything is one piece. So that is a major telling sign that this is some sort of, could even be a resin prototype, but usually the resin 
prototypes use screws and we'll actually see a couple of those today and this one obviously has rivets in there and the package is not in great condition but i'm still not going to open it it does say made in china on the base it's really hard to see on this one but i don't believe there are any metal markings on these so that might be a little curious you can also tell that the wheels don't look as detailed. The spokes don't have the depth to them. So that's another interesting difference. But in the back, you do have the correct license plate, 314 FMCM, and the Fimic Missile logo right above it. But yeah, again, you could see that the back here, it doesn't have that bumper plate. Like you could see the crack right along my finger right there another piece that Mattel decided to segment for Fimic Missile, which, you know, he wasn't the only one. They did that for a lot of cars and it is ugly. I mean, when you have a bumper plate, you have the front mouth plate, you have the eye plate, not great. So this looks way better. I like the expression more as well. But yeah, very curious. I mean, I have no idea what this could possibly be. I didn't even intend to order this. I intended to order a different version of Finn and that popped up. And I was like, well, I guess I'll take it. Now these two I did intend to order because they stand out quite a bit more. First of all, the name tags are floating in the blisters. And again, they aren't oriented properly. Like the mater is just kind of, the text is just floating in there instead of being positioned on the left side. The mater is the most interesting of the bunch here because the car looks probably the most different from what we ended up getting. It has an entirely different expression. Like look at that. And then here is your regular race team mater. So, you know, eyes, mouth, all that stuff are different. And the whole body looks to be bigger. Like this looks to be a bigger mater. You look at the eyes, you look at the hood. He looks to be chunkier. And honestly it reminds me of the Precision Series version of mater a lot. I know the expression isn't the same, but the model in and of itself kind of reminds me of the Precision Series version. Now you look at the roof here, the sirens are going to be different. They look a little bit bigger. Just everything is off. And check out the wheels here, the tires rather. You could see the cleavage between the double back tire there, whereas you cannot, like you could see like a little line right there, but it's basically one piece where I would not be surprised if those tires in the back moved independently of each other and they are just way thinner up front as well. I mean, this is just so odd to me. I've never seen anything like this. You guys have any ideas? Let me know in the comments below. I wish I could open these, but obviously not going to do that. Not a whole lot to note in the back. The towing cables look a little weird. They look darker so interesting and just the like overall glaze on him it makes him look a little glossier compared to like the usual matte finish so another weird thing there but super cool super interesting great conversational pieces for sure and i will be putting those in card protectors and last but not least for these cars two prototypes we have fillmore here now the interesting thing about him is that they never did Finn with or Fillmore with the headset as a singular short card. They just did actually, they I don't even think they did Fillmore as a short card, period. But regardless, they never did this version of Fillmore in a single packaging. They did the version without the headset that looked like this. So, again, you have segmented versus unsegmented going on here. You look at the front of the Fillmore in the package and everything is one piece. You look at the front of this Fillmore, you can clearly tell that this is a different piece than this. Look at, trace my T right there. So that's quite interesting. Again, the tires and the wheels are different, very different here for sure. Headset looks quite dirty. And obviously, didn't even address this, but this doesn't use artwork on the card, but rather a picture of the diecast itself. And that's highly unusual. But the picture of the diecast looks how we actually got it, you know, with the segmented pieces there. So again, so much going on, so many different variables. 
Everything on the back looks pretty good. So yeah, guys, you let me know what you think these are in the comment section below. Your guys honestly could be as good as mine. The other thing that's interesting is that Mater and Fillmore do not have all that copyrighted jargon on the back of the packaging that Fillmore, oh my God, that Finn had too many Fs, too many F-I, two letters of the same. But yeah, you can see on Finn, you have all of the legal jargon, but you don't have that on Fillmore or Mater. So very peculiar. Oh my gosh, you can see that the packaging, like they want to be open. They really do. But yeah, cool stuff. Definitely not my favorites of what we'll go through today, but still, regardless, very nice, very exciting pieces. All right, what is next? How about we start with Fighting Face Mater? Such a random choice, honestly. But yeah, why not Fighting Face Mater here? So a couple of the prototypes that we're going to go through right off the bat do have just markings on them. And so obviously you guys could say like, hey, anyone could just write on them and call it a prototype, right? Trust me, I'm not that easily fooled. These are legitimate prototypes. You have to know, you know where you're buying from. You have to know the seller. Are they reputable? Do they have, what else do they have that gives them credence? And that you know is the major thing in my opinion. Because sure, you can write a Sharpie, but if you write something you know in Sharpie on a car, you message me on Instagram saying like, hey, you wanna buy this prototype I got? And you got nothing else. You have no credence, you have no background, I ain't gonna buy it, right? I don't believe in you at all. Additionally, you could tell that everything here makes sense. I mean, if you could read Chinese, I'm pretty sure that it's going to you know, correlate to the production of this vehicle. You can also tell 2016, 10, 26. So October 26th of 2016, that is exactly when this car was in production because it was released in early 2017. So absolutely checks out there. You can tell that the date was even written twice below it in just a different format. But everything else on this car is exactly how it ended up being you know, when it was released. And certainly a cool version of Mater for sure that they've now done a couple times, even once from Thailand. All right, let's move on to Circus Sedan, who he's right next to. So same exact thing here. You have the writing on the hood, 2015, 311. So March 11th of 2015, again, that checks out because Circus Sedan was released later on in 2015. You can also see CJM46 is the product code, and that is also written there on the hood. Not that that really is you know, great evidence because somebody could have looked at that, written it, but again, these all came from a reputable source i can talk <laughs> circus sedan one of my favorite super chases so it's so cool to have a prototype of one up next is this murphy who has some writing on his roof now this one has a massive story to him there's a lot of moving pieces when trying to explain what this prototype actually is because at first glance you're like that literally is just murphy with writing on him and no, you would be wrong. So let's trace back to the 2010 version of Murphy from the Sarge's Bootcamp 5-pack, exclusive to Toys R Us. And yeah, it looks nothing like this at all. You can see that the grill is much longer, much more squared off. Expression in the mouth is different. The eyes are similar, but that is, again, an eye plate paired with the mouth plate. And the color orange is also different. Now, they did release Murphy again in 2018 and they corrected the you know mouth plate and the eye plate so it looks much much better and frankly much more similar to the prototype that we got going on here but again you still have the squared off grill you still have the very slitty looking mouth it really is just like a slit in the bumper because this guy over here is like absolutely screaming and so yeah still not the same then you bring in Benny Brake Drum, who was released in 2015, and you can kind of see uh, the mouth is similar, but it's not the same. But at least now we know this is where the headlights come from, because you could tell you know, the grill is that shape, more trapezoidal, kind of teardrop shaped headlights. They aren't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. They still, you know, they're colored like the Murphy that we have here. 
they all have the same rims, if I could show that. Yep, they all have the same wheels and side view mirrors. Roof racks are a little bit different between Benny and the Murphys. And Benny still had the mouth plate and the eye plate as well. So this is like an amalgam of Benny and Murphy, but with an also kind of new mouth. And then I also have a prototype similar to this where the wheels aren't painted and doesn't have any text on the roof. So super weird, you know, going through the progressions here, but yeah, that's why I love collecting prototypes. They're so nuanced, there's so much to them, and you could kind of tell a story with every single one. So yeah, that is the Murphy. Here we have a Vietnam Burt from the Piston Cup 11 pack last year. Now you could just say this isn't an air because he's you know just missing the headlight decals there. And he does have a date stamp. 3030SD. So yeah, that's fair for sure. I really hate this version of Bert though because the mouth plate being that color gray does not match the silver body at all. And that is something that Vietnam really struggles with. I think they botched finish line Lane McQueen really bad as well. All right, moving on to Ice Racer Shoe to the Roki. So here's another one that just has some writing on it. Probably my least favorite or one of my least favorites on the day. No date stamp though. This guy was released in late, late, late. Like I think I found him on December 26th of 2014. I know that's oddly specific, but my memory is just kind of elite. <laughs> Not to toot the own horn ski or anything like that, but yeah. And then basically in the 2015, he was reissued, so... Maybe that date right there is for 14, although it kind of looks like 1-6. I'm not sure. Now, this one's pretty interesting. We have Becky Whelan. Again, one with writing on it. You can't really read it as well because of the blue, the dark blue paint. But you could see these arrows and this line drawn on the edge of her roof here. It's as if the person was like saying like, hey, the checkered board drops down too far onto Becky here. You got to make sure it cuts off at that line. And I'm pretty sure that's what you know ended up happening. So again, you could tell a story with all these and it's just really cool to see, you know, somebody, somebody in charge was like, Hey, that checkerboard needs to cut off right here and drew some cool arrows to it. Wish I could like <laughs> get cars right on them. Like just imagine if Mattel sent me the zombie car, Doug Crankle, and I just rode on it. Like, this needs to be green and sent it back. And then somehow that ended up in, like, a collector's hands. Like, hey, guys, it's gray, but it really should be green. And then just call it a day. All right, here's another one in the same vein. It is Stefan Gremsky, who's a very rare release. And he has some writing here on the hood. DHJ. 6-2, is that correct? Yep, that is the product code indeed. 2015, 10-21, that also really checks out. October 21st of 2015, because he was released in like March of 2016. I do have the actual Stefan Gremsky here, so you could eyeball any differences, but at this point, you know, in the production cycle, it's going to be pretty similar to what ended up happening. That well, looks pretty good. Pretty similar between these two. Love that they have moving visors. That was a nice touch that Mattel implemented. All right, where to go next? Hmm. Oh, okay. I have duct tape made her here. So this was a super chase in 2016. They were working on him on January 11th. Hey, that's my mom's birthday. And evidently, this one checked out because it is pretty similar, if not identical, to the actual version that come that came out. And again, makes perfect sense in terms of when they released him because Duct Tape Mater was like a summer super chase. And probably one of the worst super chases ever. So yeah, duct tape mater. One more mater on the day, I promise. This is the last one. It's a Dr. Abschlepp wagon, and he's missing his grill up front here. He doesn't have a date stamp, but again, there's nothing else 
on here that points to him being a prototype. So it's just kind of one of those things that comes in a lot. I wouldn't have bought this on its own, but it is interesting to see Dr. Abschlop wagon without the grill for sure. Cool. Roof's kind of beat up. All right, now we're going to get into the really good stuff. You guys know me. I like to save the best for last. Let's start with this resin dusty crop hopper back here. You know, at first glance, again, you probably think that just looks like regular old pontoon dusty crop hopper from Plains Fire and Rescue. But you would be wrong. Yet again, it is completely resin. And you could tell because of the fact that they use screws there to put it together. There is no die cast on this whatsoever. Whereas, you know, with the actual version right here, the main part here in the center, you know, the tail wing and all that, that is die cast metal. A couple other differences are that the like plastic gray pieces, like the nose right there, the exhaust coming out of the sides are silver. Like they are very, very nice looking. Everything's way more glossy as well. But yeah, you could tell that these pieces are like a chrome silver. And they ended up being just, you know, very cheap looking gray. I mean, that's just kind of how it goes on everything. But on these resin molds that are very delicately painted and all that stuff, they are able to get a little bit more detail in them. Everything else does look to be pretty similar. Not sure many other changes were made. These are so delicate, by the way. Anything resin. So you got to be so careful with it. It looks everything similar. Yep. Obviously, this ended up being a separate piece right here. You can see the crack right there. This is plastic. But it's all one piece on the resin mold here, which is really cool. I was able to obtain two of these. And again, I've really never seen anything like this. So it's a, one of my favorite pieces that I haven't really shown on the channel. I don't even know if it was in a Giga Hall. So really excited about these two. I got those a while ago. So I guess some of these aren't super recent scores, but I knew I hadn't really talked about that in a video and I wanted to. All right, staying in the Plains Lane, like my rhyme, we have this Vanderbird right here from Epic Green Thunder. Made a good trade with him. Big thank you to him for facilitating that. I think on his channel he posted some of the stuff that he got in that. So yeah, check it out if you'd like. This is just the exact same as your regular Vanderbird, which is a pretty rare plane, undoubtedly. And if we could focus on the very faint code that it has here. It is so faint. You might even have one that you never noticed. But you could see as the light kind of flickers onto it, 199. Wow, I have never seen a fainter code than on Vanderbird here. We're gonna see some more codes like this as the day goes on, but that's pretty faint. You can feel it though, you can feel the engraving. So yeah, pretty cool. And it is the only plane known to ever have been stamped with those codes. I'm sure there are more, like I am confident there are more, but this is the only one that is known to have that. And it's kind of interesting because there's like maybe three, four out there in circulation. And yet, like we haven't seen, like we have four Vanderbird or something like that, but it's not like we have Little King out there as well. So that's just a little interesting to me. All right, we're going to jump over to this funny face Mater, who is kind of a prototype and canceled car all rolled into one. Obviously, he was scheduled to be released in early 2017. And, you know, I think like the, oh, it's like such a weird name for a series, like Mater Gets Knighted series, maybe. Yeah, I think so, because he was going to be a single the Mater, regular Mater was going to be released in a two-pack with Cargoyle. And this is obviously the Mater when he's making faces at Sergeant High Gear. And then this base really annoys me. I mean, just look at all of the codes on here. Bam, 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 bam. That is absolutely absurd. 
And you also have writing on the side here, 2016, November 12th. It's too bad that this never ended up getting released and people worked hard on it. I mean, they got paid and all that stuff, but I don't know if you guys know about this, but Batgirl was a movie that was going to come out from DC and they just canceled it because they deemed it to be too bad to put out into theaters or even on HBO Max or anything like that. And that kind of reminds me, I mean, obviously it's not like these are bad products or anything like that, but they just ran out of time under the duress of Cars 3 coming on. I mean, to be quite frank, November of 2016, and this was supposed to come out in like March, that is kind of cutting it close because we know with Stefan Gremsky, same timeline, he was, you know, looked at a whole month sooner. So maybe that had something to do with it. Here we have Neon Frosty. This ended up being quite a bit different from the released version, which I have here. It's a lighter, different expression, and the decals are weird. You have a bunch of gaps in his blue back here, which does not look very good to me. I like the color, like the gold looks better. It's brighter. I like that, but to have like all these gaps in the blue does not look as good. This guy's been floating around evading me for some time and I finally have been able to capture one. It's funny, you always just gotta be patient in the prototype canceled car market because there's always more than you think out there. There's always more than you think. All right, now we're getting into the really good stuff. We're going to bounce over to this Eric Lamely, which I know I showed in a Giga Hall, but I love it so much that I wanted to show it again here. It's the Thailand Eric Lanley because here is a prototype of the Chinese Eric Lanley and you could tell that the Chinese one is bigger, which is inaccurate because the Honda Civics in real life should not be that big, right? <laughs> they are not that big. And this is a prototype. It doesn't have any decals, obviously, but on the base, it actually references Fiat, Fiat, whatever. And if you guys know anything about cars, like I just said, this is a Honda Civic, not a Fiat. But I love the red side view mirrors, the red flag. You have Hot Wheels tires on it. It's like being all held together. Absolutely no base markings at all. And all of these parts are very characteristic of Thailand variants, or Thailand prototypes rather. You know, if you see a prototype in this dark blue color, if you see that it's plastic parts, Besides the base are in red, and if you see the bases in tan, that's a Thailand prototype, undoubtedly. And there are some exceptions, absolutely, but a lot of the Thailand prototypes have that kind of look. This is a Chinese prototype of Nigel Gearsley. Yep. Made in China. I like this one a lot, too. I like the tires probably the most. This one doesn't even roll but they're like all gray, yellow side view mirrors, white body, blue spoiler, just a cool looking prototype. And I think I have a prototype of every World Grand Prix racer now, which is pretty exciting. Definitely could use like a better one of Francesco though. I think my only like quote unquote prototype of Francesco is like this silver one in which his hat is still red. Not sure if you guys know what I'm talking about or anything like that. I think I've shown it before in a video. All right. Let's take a look at this Lightning McQueen now. This is super basic. This will take two seconds. It's your regular Rusty's Lightning McQueen, but it has a code in the back. And there have been no other sightings. This is the only one that is known to exist. Even though since there's 137, or if it says 137, there should be at least 137. And he also has pink eye does not look too fun and no date stamp by the way uh let's go to the autobahn society a legacy type group of characters in the disney cars realm because of course they were going to be released in 2010 they were shown at the peterson automotive museum but they were canceled fortunately though they came back they were uncanceled in 2016 and this is the like ringleader sedanio skinian you can see this is the actual release of it. You got the date stamp there. And then they did Michelle Motoretta and Heather Dreifing. And they're all different colors. Like Heather is like a kind of 
crystal, very light blue. Michelle is black. They all have different expressions and really look nothing like the prototypes at the Peterson Automotive Museum from six years prior. And there are a lot of prototypes of the Autobahn Society cars that you know we don't even know how to trace them. You know, do they go to the 2016 releases? Do they go to the 2010 releases? Are they for something that we didn't even know about because they are so drastically different? So I'm going to show you the progressions here. You look at this one, you think, hey, that's the exact same, but it doesn't have a date stamp. So pretty boring, but it is your first progression, you know, when we're tracing it back to its roots. And you might be able to scout some other differences, but yeah, pretty much the same there. So you go back one step further and you get this. <laughs> you get him with a slightly different shade of gray, more gun metal, darker gray. And you have the black outline around the windshield. The mouth also looks to be a little bit different. This is definitely for the 2016 release of Sedan Yoskinian because you could tell by the product code DHJ42. Honestly, I haven't even looked at the product codes of the next ones I'm going to show you, so we will learn together. But yeah, I find this really awesome because it's just like slightly off shade and it just makes it look honestly better. I like it. I like it better. One that I don't like as much though is this one that I just you know brought out. This was the first one I showed you. You can see that we've reverted to a much like flatter shade of gray that isn't as granular. It doesn't have kind of the spectra flame metallic texture that some of these these other two have. But same expression and the black frame around the windshield is there. So we're already at three prototypes for one car that are distinctly different. But again, this one seems to correlate to Sedan Yoskinian based on the base here and all that stuff. So these two prototypes, but pretty similar in the end to the final product, just different shades and minus the black outline. And then you bring in the boys, as I like to call it, the <laughs> unruly, who the hell are these types of cars? I don't know. They look nothing like Heather Dreifing. I mean, you can't trace them to Heather or Michelle. They are a little bit more similar now to the Peterson Automotive display pieces, but still different from those. And these are all in the same shade of gray now. So it's like I have finally a complete set of the like basis ground zero level Autobahn Society cars. It's so weird to explain, but of course, you know, this is a part of the release one. And then you have the Heather Dreifing, you have Michelle Motoretta, all different colors. This definitely feels more like the original Peterson on Moe Museum exhibit because they were all the same color. They're all in this like gray tone. But yeah, they all have different expressions. This guy here in the center is the most common. There are multiples of all of them out there, but you'll see this one with the most, with the like smiling expression more. And I guess you can't really argue with the date stamp or the date product code rather, not the date stamp of DHJ42 that these all are for like Sedan Yoskinian, I guess. This is my favorite right here. I actually got in a trade with Dusty Vanderson a long time ago. I just like his expression and how he's closed lip there. He just looks like he, he wants to say something, but he's keeping his mouth shut. So yeah, that, I know, it took a long time to go through all those, but there is so much lore to the Autobahn Society. It is absolutely ridiculous. So we're going to put him back. Actually, that's the wrong one. Oh, whatever. There we go. All right. Let's move on to this River Scott here. I'm a big fan of this River Scott. It's another one that does not have the, it's actually reversed now because the actual release has the black outline. The prototype does not. That is the major difference here between these River Scots. And you could also tell that the prototype has a code of 349 on the roof there. The dirt detailing on him is also more streaky. It's more linear 
If you look at the roof here, you can see how everything is just kind of going like in lines. Here it's much cloudier, it's much messier. And you could easily tell that on the back as well. It really seems like this is when they started doing these codes in 2017 because you see it, you know, you don't see it dating anywhere before 2017. Like if you can come up with, I guess Vanderbilt is the earliest that we've seen a code like this, which you can feel on a diecast because yeah, I don't know of any before Vanderbilt, which is very odd. They really seem to start in 2017. Here's Louise Nash, similar deal. Got the release version on the right here. So this one has some text. Looks like that's a weird looking date. Looks like 2017, but obviously she was already released. You know, she was released deep into 2017. Oh, maybe this is June 17th of 2017, like six. 17, 17, I don't know. She was released in the fall of 2017. Her code is 165. This one you can't really feel as much. A couple other differences are the coloring of the number and the color of the license plate, First Lady. I really do like these prototypes because again, I've actually never seen others like this. I'm sure there are obviously based on the numbers, but I do not know of them. And third in that same kind of trio is this T-Bone here. I actually fooled Astro Smokey the other day I because I know he's like this completest collector. He buys so much stuff and makes sure he has everything in package and loose. I was like, hey, do you have the glossy variants of T-Bone? And he was like, no, I don't think so. I was like, hmm. <laughs> He had no idea that they actually never did a glossy variant of T-Bone. The only Demolition Derby cars they did do that for before they made everything matte finish like you see here. Miss Fritter, RV, Dr. Damage, Sigler, and Taco. That's it. T-Bone was released in a five pack, of course, and has remained exclusive in five packs. Reissued in later five packs, but not ever as a single. Although I think he was canceled as a single. And maybe that's what this is. Who knows? But anyway, you can see that it has a completely glossy finish compared to the matte one. And he's actually longer, which is super interesting to me. He's actually longer. And he does have a code right there. Let's see what it says. 131. Cool. DXV54. Yep. This is another really... Cool prototype in my mind. I've never really seen anything like it before where it's longer, has a different finish, and has the code. All right, so I think that's all for the prototypes. And obviously, I've left the centerpiece there for the finale of this video, which has really gone on a long time. But there's a lot to talk about. You know, I've obviously said that I wanted to focus on each and every prototype. And of course, these two are... All canceled cars are prototypes by definition, but they are essentially completed prototypes that did not make it out in 2010. You have the N2O Cola Pity right here. This one was supposed to be released in one of those team hauler sets where it would include the racer, the Pity, that nine out of ten times would be the wide version of the Pity without the gun. So that applies the Octane Gain, Nitro Aid, Bumper save. I know, you know, for McQueen, it was My Name's Not Chuck. And for, I think, Chick Hicks, it was Bruiser Bukowski. But all the other ones had the wide version of the Pity, which is what you're looking at right here. This one's really cool to me because the plastic pieces are a completely different shade of purple than the main metal body. Like you could see this here, you could see his mouth plate. But I've been wanting to get these other N2O Cola Pities for years. And I've only been able to get the most popular one being, of course, the short pity that was supposed to be released as a single in 2009. And then, of course, in the team set in 2010, that would have included the crew chief and then the wide pity like this, but with the tool gun, the tall pity and the short pity. So I still need 
the wide pity with the tool gun and the tall pity. So complicated, I know, but this is so exciting to me. Very, very excited to get a canceled car of this caliber so late into the game. And obviously we have a Holy Grail type item right here being the Vuzine Semi Cab, supposed to be released as a full hauler in 2010 or early 2011 that was canceled. The only problem with this is that it's missing its like back bumper here with the mud flaps and all that, but you won't see that when it's on display. So yeah, this is so exciting to me. I never thought I'd be able to get this. And lo and behold, it has fallen into my lap. Well, it took some wheeling and dealing to obtain it, but I could not be more excited about those two. And obviously everything here is super cool. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for bearing with me for this prototype haul video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun to record. You know, I love talking about this stuff. So if you have any questions, I know some of the things are very nuanced and very complex. Just leave a comment and I'll make sure I get back to you or message me on Instagram or Twitter. Thank you as always for watching. Check out Get Me Collectibles if you need any items. He doesn't sell this stuff usually, but release stuff, he's got pretty much everything. So check it out. Link is in the description below. And I will see you guys soon for another video. Bye now.